Hey guys, I'm Logan. Thanks for tuning in to our Ask the Aquarius segment this week. Um, so this week is Discovery Week here at the Sea Lab. Um, so today we are at the Rays of the Bay exhibit. In this tank, we have three different types of stingrays I am going to talk about, and I'll also mention some facts about the fish that we have in the tank as well. Uh, so to go down our list of our species that we have, um, the first species is the guy that's about to pass in front of the window right now. That is our cow nose ray. Um, these guys are considered a midwater stingray. We also have two, we have three Atlantics and two blunt nose as well. Uh, so if you are familiar with the area around here, around Dolphin Island, or just the Gulf Coast in general, um, you are most likely seeing Atlantic stingrays if you're seeing stingrays in the water. Um, so here at this facility, we do trim the bars of our stingrays, and I wish I would have grabbed a bar to bring to y'all. Um, but the reason we tell you to shuffle your feet when you're out in the waters around here is these guys like to be pretty much this close to shore, especially down on the west end of our island. And where if you start to walk out and you don't see them, they will use this barb as a self-defense mechanism. Now in this tank, we do trim the bars of our stingray. If you think about it like our fingernails, um, we try to trim our fingernails every so often when they get long and they bother us. For our stingrays though, we do trim the barbs every three to six months. Everybody in the tank currently has their barb trim, but if somebody comes by with a barb, I'll get Angela to show you the barb so you have an idea of what we're looking for when we're talking about. Uh, so this, this guy right here is our male blunt nose, and we know he's a boy. If you look underneath his tail, you see two finger-like projections coming off the tail. Those indicate that he is a boy. Those are referred to as his claspers. And then, of course, when the females come by, they do not have them. Um, the rays are getting really excited right now because they know that I've got food and they're ready to eat their lunch. They missed breakfast this morning with everything going on this morning. And so they are definitely excited and hungry to eat. How old are these guys? Uh, so we estimate that our countos rays are probably about 12 to 13 years old. Um, all the rays in the tank except for one are wild caught or wild collected. Uh, so when we were designing our exhibit to display these animals as ambassadors, um, we purposely went out and collected these rays and we targeted them based off their size and based on approximate age because we don't want to replace these animals very quickly because these life, their lifespan is typically about 16 years. Um, so they, we went out and caught them. They were probably about two to three years old. There's no real way to know how exactly how old they were. Um, but we collect them based off their age and their size and everybody was relatively the same size. And so they're out, now they're here with us. Um, now our rays do give birth here in our tank, um, at least our cow nose rays do. Um, a baby stingray is referred to as a pup. Uh, the mother cow nose ray's gestation is about 12 months. Um, when she gives birth, she's done taking care of it. So essentially, if you can imagine a little ravioli coming out, its wings unfolds, and it's just ready to do life on its own. So it looks like a miniature adult. It already has a bar probably about yay long. Um, from day one, you're usually able to tell whether it's a boy or a girl. Um, those pups will grow quickly. Um, like I said, the mother does not take care of them. Now in the wild, typically that pup would join the herd or as a herd of, a herd of stingray, we typically refer to them as a fever. Um, they would typically join that fever. Um, but occasionally when we have babies born in our tank, we don't always keep the babies. So we've actually partnered with a facility down in uh, Fort Walton Beach, Florida, um, the Gulf area. They get our babies ever so often. Um, and because of that, they are able to, we are able to take the babies to them and they're able to take care of them there too. The other option that we have is because none of these animals go through a rigorous medication, we are able to release these babies back into the wild as part of our conservation program here at the Sea Lab. Since we took from the ocean, we're essentially giving back to them as well. Um, typical birth for us a year, are usually about three pups. Um, last year, I think we only had two. The Gulf Arium got one of those pups. And so hopefully next time I go over there, I'll be able to see them. Um, I'm going to go ahead and throw some food into the tank to calm these guys down a little bit. Um, but if y'all have any questions, feel free to ask. And I'm going to keep on pointing out some things while I'm throwing some food in the tank. So for today's, for lunch, we are feeding anchovies just like you would have on your pizza. If you like that. I'm not a huge fan. I'd rather have pineapple. But here we go. So here at this facility, we do broadcast feed. We do not hand feed our animals here. Part of that is, like I said, we do release, we do have the ability to release these guys back to the wild if we had to do so. And that way they are not completely dependent on us. Now besides, go ahead. So we typically feed these guys two times a day, um, sometimes three, depending if we have extra food. Like also up here, I've got some clams, which is which what we would call as enrichment. 
It's not a main source of their food. It just gives them something to munch on and chew on. Um, but besides anchovies, we also feed these guys krill, squid, capelin, herring, and anchovies. I mean, like I said, we already feed anchovies. Um, we also do a vitamin gel mix. Uh, because these guys are in captive care, they don't necessarily eat everything they should be eating to keep their vitamin levels up. So about three times a week, we'll make a vitamin gel and we'll feed it to these guys just to make sure they're getting all the nutrients they require. Where is their mouth? So the mouths for these guys are all on bottom. A lot of people mistake the cow nose rays. Uh, they have this fin that comes down. They mistake that for a mouth. Um, so that fin essentially will come down and allow those cow nose rays to sit just above the bottom just a little bit and suck food up like a little vacuum cleaner. Um, so a lot of times I call these guys little Roombas because they will essentially scurry across the bottom and they'll have the bottom of the tank cleaned probably in about 15 minutes. Are their teeth sharp or are they blunt? The, their teeth are actually blunt. Um, so if you think like sharks, sharks of course have sharp teeth for what they chew and what they catch. For the rays, these guys typically eat stuff off the bottom. So the main part of their diets would be oysters, clams, squid, shrimp, stuff that have hard shells. So they got to be able to break those shells. These guys also lose their teeth just as frequently as sharks do. So occasionally after feeding, you can look inside the tank and you can actually see a stingray tooth every now and then. If I find one, I will point it out, or hopefully I can scoop it out and show everybody. So who do you have in the tank with them? Who's their friend? So we have three different fish species in the tank. The most notable will be the mullet. These are the guys that if you see them hopping out of the water, if you're out in the ocean, you see fish hopping out of the water, nine times out of 10, it's gonna be mullet. These guys are in the tank because they are algae grazers. So around our tank, we actually have hair algae growing around the sides. So during the summertime, they are my absolute best friends because that algae on the side of the tank will grow ridiculously crazy. So these guys keep that trimmed down so I don't have to get in the tank and cut it myself. We also have some permit in here. Um, if you know what a pompano is, these are the fish that you typically see in the surf. If you're out on the beach and the waves are crashing down, you see fish swimming around you. Those are mostly permit and pompano. Uh, so permit are in the same family as pompano. Uh, the biggest difference is the permit will have an orange anal fin, so you can actually tell the difference between the permit and the pompano because pompano is typically yellow. Now they're both big, flat-handed fish. Um, a lot of people like to eat them too. I've heard they are very good to eat. I have not ever had them myself. And then we also have some small mahara. Now the mahara in this tank will only get about three inches long. They're not a very big fish. Um, they're very silver in color and they school together very well. Uh, these guys were just taking up some space in the back, so we decided to put them out here. Um, at this facility, if you want a fish to come out here and grow quickly, this is the tank to put them. Uh, because this tank gets fed so much, and with all the natural sunlight, these guys grow quick, very, these guys grow big very quickly. How often do you get into the tank? Do you ever get in with them? I do every now and then. Um, so we actually got in last week to finish up the trimming of the barbs, which allowed us to open the tank back up so everybody can safely touch them. Um, I probably get in at least once a month, if not twice. Because uh, we have to get in there and make sure everybody's barbs trimmed and occasionally stuff will fall in that I'll have to get out. Uh, of course, when I get in our tank here, I typically wear waders. I don't just get in there barefooted, mainly because since I am feeding clams, they don't always chew the clams all the way up very well. And so there's the potential that the clams could cut the bottom of feet. Um, now, when we do get in the tank, the rays, they typically don't mind it at all unless I'm chasing them with a net. Then they're like, hey, leave me alone. Now, they will run into me and be like, hey, get out of my way. I'm swimming here. They do stay in this tank year-round. Um, so one of the questions we just got asked is they stay, these guys stay out here year-round. Now, of course, being on the coast, um, we are prone to have bad weather, hurricanes, tornadoes, all of the above. Um, so these guys do stay out here year-round, even when it's cold. So I think the coldest that I've seen it this past winter was probably about 25 degrees. These guys were out here during that weather. Um, we do have a heater and chiller on this tank that keeps this tank about 72, year, 72 degrees all year-round. And so these guys have no problems with it. Um, we also do a water change on this tank daily. It's probably about 10 to 20% water change with the salt water. So does it snow here? It does not snow here. I, I, well, at least the two years I've been here, it has not snowed here. Every once in a while. Every blue moon. <laughs> but not much. How do you get the stingrays? Uh, so all these guys were wild collected. Um, so we actually went out on a boat and we took a big sand net and we herded them and collected them. Um, now, that is with one exception. We have one Atlantic stingray. His name is Alfredo. Uh, he came to us from the Gulf Arium over in Fort Walton Beach. He was actually born and raised at their facility. 
He is about three years old now. We got him last January when he was two. Um, we got him in hopes of actually having baby Atlantics born in the next few years because um, we do have two females as well. So if you look at beneath their tails, if you see two finger-like projections coming off, uh, those are indicate that they are boys. Those are called their claspers. Female rays do not have claspers, so they don't have those finger-like projections coming off. So in this tank, we have a total of four boys. Two male cow nose ray, one male blunt nose ray, and one male Atlantic. The big tan one right here in front of the window is our male blunt nose. This is one of our male cow nose. And then the male Atlantic, I think he's hanging out down there. So you don't keep the boys and girls together? But everybody's together in the tank. Oh, okay. What do you think is the biggest misconception when it comes to stingrays and rays in general? Uh, so mis misidentifying them. Um, I actually saw a photo posted on a local Facebook page the other day where a stingray washed up. It was it had passed away. Um, a lot of people were asking what it was. Um, people haven't quite realized what the difference between a skate and what a ray is. Um, so there's two big differences that I can tell you right off the bat. Um, skates typically have short, stocky tails. And if you look at our rays, our rays typically all have really long tails. Rays also have a barb where skates do not. Another thing is, is how they reproduce. Uh, so rays will give a live birth. It's not a true live birth where skates will actually lay eggs. Um, those eggs we typically refer to as mermaid purses. Um, so here in the Gulf Coast, if you find a mermaid's purse, it's most likely from a skate. Now, if you are in other parts of the world, it could be from a shark, typically a bamboo shark or an epaulette shark, which are all usually found in touch tanks at other facilities. Um, the reason we don't have them on display here is they are not a native animal in the area. And our goal at this facility is to display the native wildlife. We do not. Um, another misidentity is when people look at the cow nose rays, they think they're manta rays. Um, so we do have manta rays locally here in the Gulf. Now the manta rays that we have, I believe, can get about 16 feet across. Um, so they would quickly outgrow our tank. Um, those guys are also jumpers. Uh, so these guys would not be able to be housed here at this facility. A thing that separates manta rays from stingrays, our manta rays are typically filter feeders. And so they will actually open their mouth, which is typically in the middle of their face, and they will filter feed the phytoplankton, zooplankton, and other small fish they may catch. Um, they also do not have barbs. Does anybody else have any questions? Wrap up. All right, guys, I'm going to wrap it up. I am going to throw some clams into the tank for these guys to chew on. Like I said, this is pretty much enrichment for these guys. And so occasionally, if you want to ever want to hear what they sound like when they're chewing on these, um, the best way I can describe it, if you've ever been snorkeling at a reef, uh, you have parrot, they do eat through the shell, so they'll actually munch on it and crush it up. So if you ever are on a reef and you see parrot fish, and you're underwater and you hear a bunch of clicking sounds, those parrotfish are typically eating coral. And so when I throw this in there, I typically hear that and I'm thinking, mm, I should be under the water somewhere snorkeling. So I'm actually gonna throw the shell in a hole rather than open it up and let them chew on it. The guys that typically go after this are our cow nose rays. They do have the better teeth suited to chew on these. <laughs> 